Thank you for accepting our invitation to this short interview. First step, I want to know with which one I have the honor to be today. Thank you. First, thank you for the invitation. My name is Raba Bukirub, so I'm a senior scientist at the CNRS. It's the, national, the French National Center for Scientific Research. I work at the Institute of Electronics, Microelectronics and Nanotechnology. It's in the north of France. It's a platform. So, so you are French? Yes, not from background, but I'm a French scientist, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, today you have a double presentation. You have a double role. Yeah. Like you have a presentation and a chairman. Let's right. start with the presentation. Yes. So the presentation was on the um, how to use really technologies because I come from an institute of electronics, microelectronics and nanotechnology. It means people mostly make devices. So indeed as a chemist, to see how we can really combine the technology and our knowledge in chemistry to um, address some really technological importance in diabetes. How we can improve the treatment of diabetes by de developing new technologies instead you know, of having these um, uh, injections uh, daily used by the uh, people with diabetes. So in that sense, Indeed, you know, when you have this um, targeted um, audience coming from different areas, you know, people in physics, in chemistry. materials, in chemistry. Uh, so it's really important, you know, to put the, the, um, the question like I would see as a chemist first myself, because I'm not a biologist. So the way you, you question the self, it would be different. So from you, you're not a physician? Not absolutely, no. I'm, my background is really from uh, organometallic chemistry. But over time, um, I did indeed, when I moved to Canada, and then I started working on surface science. When back in France, indeed, when you work on surface science, forcingly, you move to materials, then you have indeed the whole, I would say, picture of a material, functionalization, and then the application. That's exactly what we would try to do really over the, um, the last uh, 20 years. And how we can start really from making a material, but bringing a functionality, functionality to the material then find an application. That's the reason also in, in uh, our group, it's really, we have chemists, electrochemists, and biologists. And we even try to have even a, a medical doctor because that way you can really ask really the question, the need of the medical doctor. And then you can start really coming up with the answer, but from the beginning, from really the material and get it to the clinical, when possible, of course, the, uh, setting. So. As a, yeah, as a presenter, I indeed, then I would say uh, the question how I ask it, it's exactly the question how a chemist will do or a material scientist will do. Probably if it will be a biologist, the question would be completely different because we don't have the same background, we don't have the same approaches. And that's for me, it's important really to put that, the, the, the introduction, really to explain why it's important, what is diabetes, why it's important to treat diabetes, and how these people are treated today, what are the different technologies, and what is our approach, and why we choose this approach really to target the same, I would say, treatment at the end, or to reach the same efficacy, or even propose a better technology for diabetes treatment. And also, I think, yes, this, this type of approach that, of course, we developed really the, the devices we have developed, explained how they work on the basis, on physical basis and everything, but also explain that could be working for any type of drug because it's not only we apply them for insulin because that's exactly the target, the initial target, but they could be used for any type, other type of drugs just to administer through the skin. So it's for general use? It's Absolutely. Use? Yeah, the, the, just the, the proof of concept, we have to demonstrate on something which is very complex. It's insulin. It's really very difficult. But then when you know it works for this type of, of molecules, then forcingly you can apply it for others. And the second role as a chairman, how do you feel the presentation? How? As a chairman, it's always, I think it's, um, yeah, you're not anymore a presenter. I think you have this role of like a um, animation of the, uh, because at the end, the talk will be given by an invited or a uh, speaker in any ways. But it's more on the question side, on the discussion. I think it's really important always to bring something, you know, because I think if you have a talk, nobody asks questions. I think you feel either people are not interested, or they are tired, or they didn't understand, hmm. which often makes 
the um, the presenter in, in a bad position, you know, why nobody asks me questions, either they're not interested by my topic. So you're you are like a father for that, in that moment. You're like somebody who... You have a lot of kids. Yes, you try to make the connection between the speaker and the audience in a way there's, there's going to be this exchange. Everybody feels like, okay, I probably didn't understand the whole topic, but there are points I could understand. There are pro pro also, because in a discussion, you can also make propositions to improve the, uh, the experiments or new ideas, probably then also some collaborations. That's how you initiate collaborations, because you saw something. Oh, this probably could be applied for my whatever I'm doing in my corner there. And then it, it initiates. I think it's really interesting to establish this contact and this, I would say, exchange between the speaker and the audience. Uh, another question. Mm. Let's discuss. We are interesting. How is your scientist life in your country? How easy is for you, like a scientist, to apply for a new project, for a new fund? Seeing from this point of view, from this year, and compare with, let's say, ten years ago, it's much easier, it's more complicated. It's everything is different from ten, twenty years ago, indeed, because we had more resources to work in the lab. Probably 20 years ago, you don't even need to apply for funding unless you want to have more money and probably recruit more people and everything. Today, I think the shift indeed, I think it's international. It's not really uh, specific to France. It's everywhere in Europe is the same. We do work on projects. It means we have to apply for funding for a project, for a three or four years project. And at the end, indeed, you can apply by changing things or, or completely new projects. So this unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's exactly the way it works, whether it's at the national level or at the European level. But it's much easier to apply for funds now or it's more complicated? Or no, it's, it's a competition. very big fight. The competition is high indeed, because uh, at the European level, you actually compete with all European countries. So at the national level also, you compete with all because it's not the same amount of money, it's not the same. We compete also with all your colleagues at the national level working in the same field. So the competition is there because at the end, either Europe or the national agency would be only funding a certain number of projects. It could be 20%, it could be 10% or below 10%. It means the 80%, if it's 20%, are not funded. So in any case, yeah, either you are on the 20%, or on the other side, you don't get the funding. So, no, I think the competition is there. And I think that's fair enough because also the, the, I think the, the fact that we have this um, uh, competition also, it means you select the best project. It means also when you're selected, you're happy because it means your project is really good and you feel like it was evaluated and it gives you also strength to believe that what you're doing or proposing is really of good quality. So then whether it's easy or it's difficult, of course, it cannot be easy if you have only 10% uh, uh, success rate, which means you have to write more projects A continuously project. and much better project. It means you have continuously to come up with new and original ideas. So. But I think, yes, as a scientist, that's exactly what you want. You want also to be competitive. That's exactly what you learn since you start your uh, career. I mean, you have to be competitive because even when you're not competitive at the national, you have to be at the international. So Which is much harder. It's much harder, but it's, I think it's part of, the, uh, of our job, of our mission as well, is to be, I would say, as good as you could. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested about, about young researchers how you can motivate him, how you can uh, manage to keep it near to you. How is in your country the life of a young researcher? I think this, again, oh, it, it becomes much more difficult than uh, years ago because, again, today the competition is international. Okay. Yes, the, the open positions are open for everyone. Anyone can apply, so it means even before you know, when you don't speak French, probably you will not apply in France because you say I cannot teach in French or I cannot adapt myself to the environment. It's much more difficult for me. But today, I think research is international. The, uh, everyone, everybody can speak English. Anyways, you don't have a choice. 
So that's indeed makes it much more difficult because the competition is international, because also the level of research, the quality of the candidates, it's much higher than it was before. You mentioned something, okay, uh, it's hard for you to apply because it's French, but using an international language like English, yeah. it opens a competition for everybody. Absolutely. That means not even from Europe or Central Europe, even outside of Europe or Eastern Europe. How do you see that? I, it's for me. I found it in any ways. Uh, I, um, research is international. It's an exchange. So I think more open it is, better it is, because that way you can have much better candidates. More you open, you have a much better choice of recruiting the best candidates. But also, it's more important for networking because, as I said, research is international. It's not any more confined at local or at the national level. So. People from ab abroad, they will bring you a lot of things. They will bring you the different ways of approaching things. Of thinking, yes. of networking, culture. Yes, but also it creates networking with their, where they're coming from. And at some point you had this exchange with the students, with the um, uh, researchers. So you tell us that this exchange of students, of people, makes some like a bridge between Absolutely. communities? Absolutely. Absolutely. Which one, and this way you can help the research uh, community in order to get better results because of, I don't know, better competitivity between them? No, I think the, the bridge is really important because science is a con continuous exchange. That's the reason we publish, because you want to share your research. I think it's exactly the same. When you have international collaborations, this exchange, it should be continuous exchange with other countries, with other cultures, because science cannot be confined. Science is really international, it's universal, so it has to be this exchange. You can see it everywhere, either in Europe, in the States, or in Canada, in most of the countries, you find almost every, uh, I would say, nationality in the country. It really makes open because it's really important to have this exchange. But also the networking, you know, today if you do your postdoc in Germany, another one in Belgium, you come back to France, you know, you can see already you have three countries, you have a network, which is really important because in the European project most of the time are three or four countries, you know, for applications. So, no, no, this is really important, but also I think it brings, yeah, when you, somebody comes in your lab, you want that it brings something new. You don't want him to do the same thing you do because that you know. You want that he brings you something you don't know, something probably different. Uh, to be complimented Absolutely. With you. you don't recruit to, people. To learn something from him and him to learn something absolutely. from you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's an exchange. We're coming back to this exchange indeed, yes. Okay. So I'm curious. I have another curiosity about AI. Hmm. How do you see interaction between AI and writing article of science? Ah, very good, <laughs> very good question and very challenging question. Well, for I guess for people on my age, I guess we don't. I wouldn't say I would even think a second to use artificial intelligence for writing my papers because I think it just. Do you try it? No, and I will never. You, you don't have the curiosity to test no. it. No, no, because I think for me, it's still, I think uh, you know, it's, I grew up like this. I I was trained like this, and I think for me, it's important really that I have exactly what I'm saying in the paper, it comes from me. But if it could help to improve the quality of the paper, it could help the students, I guess, to go to another level, then why not? But if it just makes the students lazy and not thinking because a program or software can do it for them, then I think it's really a drawback and it's a limitation. I would not even encourage that, yes. Okay, so at the end, why IVMP? Why Magurele? Magurele is not the first time I came here. I think it's the third visit, if I remember properly. But I think, yes, this, I got an invitation. And I think, yeah, the people I know, the, the people I look at the topics are really interesting. And I, we had some collaborations a little bit less now before with Magurele. So for me, it's important. I, go, I come almost every year to Romania, so even if it's not my gorilla, it's Bucharest or another place. And I have former students, postdocs, that's what getting coming to the networking, which is really important. This exchange as well. And I think that's what's the beauty of science, when things work, because there's also the human behind it, everything, you know. And then when th th there's something more just than science, also this human link, this human exchange, as I found it ex exceptional and really something which, yeah, drive science very really in a good way and a very positive way, yes. 
Okay, some few words for the organizer. I think honestly, it was very, very nicely organized. Up to now, everything was done uh, professionally from the invitation to the organizing of the trip and everything. I found it really just a recommendation for the future. You know, a conference, you could, but again, a conference relies on funding. So I would myself, indeed, what I like, I think it's nice to have senior um, researchers as uh, giving the presentations. But I think it's always, it should be a way for also giving a chance to the young researchers or PhD students or postdocs to present their works probably uh, over one day. But again, I'm saying, yeah, if you have a conference for three days because that's the only funding you get, you cannot extend it to four days. But I think it's really important not just having posters. Posters are not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It's very good for exchange. But I think it's a training again for the students, for postdocs or young researchers. You know, because the effort you make when you make a, an oral presentation, when you make a poster, it's not the same. A poster, you make it yourself. Alone, you print it and that's it. With no words, you know, face meaning, you know, exactly. Q&A, no. Exactly. It's, it's a different exchange. It's, it's without personality. Yes, it's a different exchange. While an oral, you're in front of an audience with different backgrounds, with different uh, interests, with different uh, curiosities, and all of a sudden you had to convince them why I'm doing this is good. You have to listen to me. What I'm saying is really important. I think then, yes, it's, it's completely different. The, um, uh, the exchange you have with the audience is completely different. And also, one day or the other, you will become a professor at university. You have to give seminars. You have to give talks. You have to defend you know, your reports at the European uh, Union, whatever, to get your fundings. That it's really important to have this indeed experience in talking in front of the audience. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice for everything. To nice to meet you. Thank you so much.